Hi, it's Scott Allen, and today I'm going to have a look at what the Wallabies need out of their number 10 and the relative merits of each candidate. The first thing the number 10 is responsible for is setting the depth of the attack. If the number 10 stands too deep, as you can see Barnes is here, the whole attack gets too deep. And that depth is transferred to the next player who receives the ball, and then on to the next player, and so on. So you can see in this example the Wallabies are nearly 20 metres back from where they started before the ball gets into any space. Here's an example with Beale standing too deep. All he's doing is transferring pressure to Pilotta now. He's got defenders on top of him as he receives the ball. Again, Barnes here too deep, and he just gives the all-black line too much time to get up in the face of the defenders and shut down the attack. Again, it's Barnes too deep, and that was a recurring theme for him throughout 2012. The next area I want to cover is vision to see opportunities, and then decision-making to take advantage of those opportunities. In this first example, Cooper's vision's good. He sees the spaces out wide and uses a nice out-the-back play to get the ball towards that space. The opportunity's been created, but now Ashley Cooper has to straighten up to preserve space for his outside men. Instead, he runs across field, takes away the space, and the opportunity's lost. Again, Cooper has the vision, sees the spaces out wide, and gets the ball there quickly. Now all Kirtley Beale has to do is straighten up, target that last defender you can see in the clip, and then the three men outside of him will be able to do something with the space. Instead, Kirtley Beale and all of the attack drifts sideways and takes the space away. Once again in this example, Cooper knows where the space is. He uses a cutout pass to get the ball wide to Ashley Cooper, who has to preserve the space for his outside men. Again, a crossfield opportunity lost. Both Cooper and Barnes identify the space correctly this time and create the opportunity for Ashley Cooper. He just needs to run at that last defender and then he'll have a two-on-one outside him for a try in the corner. Instead, he tries to step back inside, slips, and the opportunity is lost. Whilst it's important for the number 10 to have the vision and to get the ball to where the opportunity is, he still needs to rely on the outside men. So Cooper here correctly identifies where the space is. All Mitchell had to do was pass that ball on and it was a two-on-one. Similarly, in this situation, Cooper can see the ball needs to go wide, and at this point McCabe only needs to pass the ball and there's a two-on-one outside him. Instead, he straightens up and that turned into a turnover. One criticism I'd have of Beric Barnes is that sometimes he seems to have a plan in his head and then run with that plan no matter what the opportunity. In this situation he was always thinking kick, but there was a three on two outside if he'd chosen not to kick. In the end, it's poorly executed and it's a wasted opportunity. And in this next example he's got an opportunity to pass the ball to Yuani so he's a one on one. Instead, he turns back inside and again the opportunity's lost. And in this example in the recent game against England, he had a three on one outside him and instead tried the chip kick. Whilst the ball was recovered, it was a much riskier option. Players at this level just shouldn't be throwing away opportunities like this. Having the vision to recognise the opportunity and making the right decision is one thing. Then you've got to have the pass to back it up. Beric Barnes doesn't have any problem with his passing. And Quade Cooper's got one of the best passes in world rugby. Whether it's a short pass or a long pass, he's always accurate and the ball's never in the air for too long. Similarly, there are no problems with James O'Connor's pass, whether it's a short or long pass. Kirtley Beale has a very good short pass that you can see here with this great try to Digby Yuani. But when he starts throwing long passes, he has a tendency to throw wild looping passes that hang in the air for too long or are too deep. With the ball hanging in the air so long, it gives time for the opposition to move forward and attack the ball carrier as he catches the ball. It's been a recurring theme in 2012 with Kirtley when he's been playing at 10. If he wants to be a genuine option at 10, he needs to fix this. In part two of the video, I'll look at taking the ball to the line and the 10 as a running option, and then have a look at who might be the best option for the Wallabies. 